Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy 2021. We're, of course, uh, Trinity St. Paul's Zoom edition, a united church where all are welcome. And I'm Ashwin Ranjit, presiding today while our Reverend Sherry DeNovo is on break. We thankfully have Pradeep and James managing our logistics, Brad, our resident musical director, Carol and members of the choir, Janet Mayers reading scripture, and Barbara Lloyd leading the prayers of the people. And we are fortunate to have Carol Ann Marshall lead our reflection today. You might remember Carol Ann. She's a former OPP police officer and author who grew up in Barbados. And last February, she shared with us her own powerful spiritual journey where she has discovered her calling from God to educate women about toxic relationships and provide a safe place for them to heal from it. Today, she'll be speaking about the impact that the light of God has on our lives. And now we uh, acknowledge the, the land we are on, the acknowledgement of our traditional territory. 
As we assemble in this holy place, we recognize that for thousands of years, this territory has been a sacred gathering place for many peoples of Turtle Island. We respectfully acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of several indigenous, indigenous nations and wish to pay special recognition to the Mississaugas of the credit. The original nations continue to cry out for justice. As treaty people, we commit to listen, learn, and work to right the wrongs of the past and present. And now, underscoring our theme today is the lighting of the Christ candle. The light of Christ. And now we share the peace um, via Zoom today. Uh, we uh, may really may the peace of Christ be with you and uh, maybe spend a little time now just acknowledging virtually each other, those all of us that are here today. Um, Happy New Year. scripture readings for this morning. The first reading is from Jeremiah. It's chapter 31 verses 7 to 14. The prophet tells God's promise of restoration to the people of Israel who were scattered in exile. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a parent to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, the one who scattered Israel will gather them, and will keep them as a shepherd keeps a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed them from hands too strong for them. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The second reasoning is from Psalm 147 verses 12 to 20, and it's a reading from Voices United, page 869, part 2, if you wish to follow along. Hallelujah, O Jerusalem! Zion, praise your God! For God has strengthened the bars of your gates and blessed your children within you. God has established peace within your borders and filled you with the finest wheat. You send your word to the earth, O God. Your command runs swiftly. 
who give snow like wool and sprinkle hoarfrost like ashes. You scatter hailstones like breadcrumbs. You send the cold and the waters stand frozen. You utter your word and the ice melts. You blow with your wind and the waters flow. You make known your word to Jacob, your statues and decrees to, to Israel. You have not done this for any other nation, nor have you taught them your laws. And the third reading is from the Gospel of John. It's chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. And we're reading today from the Inclusive Bible. John shares his understanding of the profound significance of Jesus Christ. In the beginning, there was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. The Word was present to God from the beginning. Through the Word, all things came into being, and apart from the Word, nothing came into being that has come into being. In the Word was life, and that life was humanity's light, a light that shines in the darkness, a light that the darkness has never overtaken. Then came one named John, sent as an envoy from God, who came as a witness to testify about the light, so that through his testimony everyone might believe. He himself wasn't the light, he only came to testify about the light, the true light that illumines all humankind. The Word was coming into the world, was in the world, and though the world was made through the Word, the world didn't recognize it. Though the Word came to its own realm, the Word's own people didn't accept it. Yet any who did accept the word, who believed in that name, were empowered to become the children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor urge of flesh, nor human will, but born of God. And the word became flesh, and stayed for a little while among us. We saw the word's glory, the favor and position a parent gives an only child, filled with grace filled with truth. John testified by proclaiming, This is the one I was talking about when I said, The one who comes after me ranks ahead of me, for this one existed before I did. Of this one's fullness we've all had a share, gift on top of gift. For while the law was given through Moses, the gift and the truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only begotten, ever at Abba's side, who has revealed God to us. Herein is wisdom. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. We are at the beginning of a calendar year. This is the time we make promises, set goals and look forward to wondrous things happening in our lives in 2020, and sorry, 2021 for the next 12 months. Many of us, however, are looking back at 2020 and saying, good riddance. We think only of the inconveniences that we have endured for the past 10 months. The things we were not able to do, the friends we were not able to see that we could not be with, the awkward virtual meals, the families we could only connect with via Zoom, I'm sure there are a lot of people wishing they had brought shares in Zoom when it was just a brand new startup. However, I suspect that very few of us saw God anywhere in what happened in 2020. Some of us are probably still cursing him and blaming him or her for letting loose this virus on the world 
and disrupt in our lives. And I decided from the outset that I would not see the virus in a bad light. I would look at the pandemic quite differently. And from my perspective, God was everywhere. And if we really stop to think about what is in the gospel reading today and connect it with what happened in 2020 with the pandemic, it's easy to find God. In the first chapter of John's gospel, right at the very beginning, the lesson is all about light. Life being the light of humankind, light shining in the darkness, the darkness not being consumed by the light. John the Baptist coming to give witness to the light, light being there for everyone coming into the world. Now you're probably saying, what does this have to do with the events of 2020? And what does 2020 have to do with light? It was nothing but darkness that has now spilled over into 2021. I think it has everything to do with light. So I ask that you indulge me for a few minutes. Think about what happens when you turn on a light. It illuminates everything around it and it shows up what's there whether the place is filthy or dirty or, or clean, whether it's full or it's empty or colorful or drab, you get the picture. Now, is that not what happened in 2020? COVID-19 brought light by illuminating all of those things and more. You can turn off the light if you're disgusted with what it's illuminating and turn on another light that may illuminate something much more pleasant. But try as we might, we could not at the very beginning and we can't now turn off what COVID-19 has illuminated. The virus shone a light. Let me draw your attention to a few. In relationships where people who are not used to being stuck with each other for long periods of time, sometimes for 24 seven, previously ignored, the virus shone a light on the extent and the growing incidences of domestic and other forms of abuse that society has chosen pre to pretend does not exist. The virus shone a light on the way society treats our most vulnerable members, the homeless, the mentally ill, those in prison, especially those who have been wrongfully accused and convicted, the poor and the marginalized. The virus shone a light on those who had leadership skills to steer their nations and those who did not have those skills. The virus shone a light and brightly illuminated racial tensions around the world, galvanized by George Floyd's murder. Without the stay at home orders, schools and colleges closed people glued to their TV sets 24 seven. His murder would likely have been just a blip on the local news. His life would have been senseless, would be another black life senselessly taken without bringing to the surface what we have been saying all along about how blacks are treated by police because most people would have been too busy to notice or even to care. The virus shone a light on who we have elevated to worship status and forced us to see what people in many society, who people in many society 
look down on people like garbage collectors and delivery people, janitors in hospital, grocery store workers, truck drivers, personal support people, the list goes on. And they are in fact, the ones who are most important because they are the essential workers who have been keeping us alive. The thing about light is it wakes us up. It gets our attention. It's difficult to keep your eyes closed without squirming when a light is shining directly in your face. This is what the virus did and continues to do. And this is exactly what I believe John meant when he said in verse five, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We have been in the dark, ignoring what has been going on in our world and the mess we continue to make of it, despite the evidence of our destruction being right in our faces. God has been shining a light in our darkness for quite a while, but we have chosen not to see it until now when none of us can escape the brightness. The darkness can no longer be contained. A lot of the darkness that we have been willfully dealing with our, our species, we've been, been destroying it because we have been ignoring the impact of climate change. We have had prolonged drought, destructive earthquakes, extreme hot and cold temperatures happening in places unheard of before, devastating wildlife fi wildfires with the entire continent of Australia practically in flames. We have had melting ice caps, the list goes on. The virus has shown us that all of that darkness can no longer prevail because the light has taken over. We have a saying in Barbados that whatever you do comes out in, in the darkness, comes out in the light. It's usually with a sexual connotation. However, the concept here is exactly the same. The light is stronger than the darkness. It will expose whatever is in the darkness. It cannot be covered up or kept hidden forever. The name, the gospel tells us, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He was a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. When we think of our world, as we ponder these words, do we see the virus as a substitute for John the Baptist, who was coming ahead to let the people know that Jesus, the true light, was on the way? What else does God have in store for us to force us to see the light? Because clearly, many of us still do not believe that the virus exists. The light is not bright enough because many of us have truly not woken up. Many of us do not truly believe that the virus is real, even though the entire world is affected by it. The thing is though, will we be able to see the real light when it arrives? For many people of, the, of Jesus's day, he was not the light. He was not seen by many as having any illuminating powers and they eventually killed him. When we think of ourselves, what have we learned from the virus? Will we continue to live in the dark? 
or are we willing to open our eyes truly to see what has been illuminated and change the way we live to be prepared for the true light so that it does not consume us. Let us not forget what John told us. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. We need to open to what, to be open to what the light is showing us in our own lives. Light is here to guide us. And while we may have dreaded the virus and the way it has practically taken out over our entire lives, our faith is there to sustain us and keep us remembering that we are not in this alone. We may not see the light, but it is there nonetheless. There's a much stronger force out there looking out for us, lifting us up and helping us to keep our faces turned towards the direction of the true light the one that will illuminate and guide us through dark times. I grew up in the Methodist church in Barbados. And one of my favorite hymns is God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. It was a poem written by Will William Cowper in, in 1773 entitled Light shining out of darkness after one of his suicide attempts. And it then became the hymn that we know today. He was moved to write these words, which I think beautifully sums up what we have to look forward to in the days ahead. In one of the verses, he says, you fearful saints, fresh courage take, the clouds you so much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. Amen. Thank you, Caroline. For the offering, we share our reflections, our time, and donate if we can. We have a link at the very end of the bulletin and on our website. And of course, thank everyone for your ongoing contributions. God, please accept our gifts we offer you. Amen.
The prayers of the people today will include two periods for a silent prayer introduced by the words, Holy God, speak with us now in the silence of our hearts. And they will end with loving God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. Let us pray. God of our lives, our world, our hopes and dreams. You promised our ancestors joy after their mourning, comfort and gladness after sorrow. In this new year, help us to find that new life for ourselves and to be that new life for others, bringing gladness, joy and comfort. We think especially today of those in our city challenged by COVID-19, those suffering in hospitals or at home, those isolated in long-term care homes, those who have lost homes or jobs, those confined in prisons, those grieving the loss of family members. We lift up those still working to offer essential services to us, often putting their own lives at risk. We call to mind many who are suffering now. Holy God, speak with us in the silence of our hearts. Loving God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. God of the stars, the seas, the sky, help us to connect with the universal spirit that guides and unites us as a human family and part of your cosmic creation. We mourn for a world torn by the pandemic by violence and terror, by the false hierarchies of caste. We give thanks for the insights, inspiration and skill of those who bring healing, light and life into their work and their relationships. May we too embody your light as we consider and act on the needs of our neighbors near and far. May we shine with love and hope in this world, so in need of mending. Give us energy, O oh God, to continue the struggle to save the planet, to reconcile with Indigenous sisters and brothers, to address inequality in its many forms. In this year of 2021, May we turn outwards again to stand with those who mourn because of acts of hatred, to commit to loving earth and all its creatures. Bring us back, O oh God, to your essence of logos, life and light, to meaning, purpose and vision. Encourage us as we seek truth to find our source in you, O oh God. Celebrate life to incarnate the spirit. Be the light that shines love, wisdom, and hope to others. As we consider the needs of our neighbors and our world, holy God, speak with us now in the silence of our hearts.
we pray now for we loving God hear our prayers and in your love answer. We pray now for those we name aloud or in silence, and especially James Holtzbauer and Willie Malate, Lee Potts, Yvonne R, Zaire M. Said, Gail Allen and family, Sasha Lusilov, Mama Dorcas Makongwa and nephews, Kio Kanse Lachile, Kagasano Lachile, and Tumasang Matil. Fred Wheeler. Mary Marshall. Emma Wakeling. Robert Monteith. Susan Fullerton. Boyd Kodak. Judy Bonner. Carl Heinz Dette, father of Carola Dette. And Carolyn Lemon. And others on our hearts now. Kathy. My uncle, um, Lou Rusi. Catherine Bear. Kim Fennell. The Drudge family. My son, Ian. Loving God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. We continue to pray with the Shining Waters Regional Council of the United Church of which we are a part. And in particular today for the congregations of Port Carling United Church, King City United Church and East End United Church Toronto. Please join me now in the ecumenical prayer. As we pray with the church in Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, and Palestine. O God of Sarah and Abraham, our tears are mixed with yours, weeping for the cities of the world. We weep for the holy cities where brothers and sisters kill each other, where hatred feeds and nourishes anger, where animosity blinds mercy, where religions divide. As children learn to hate and the elderly nurse old grudges. We see and we grieve. And yet we have not loved the things that make for peace. So we pray. Kyrie eleison. We weep for oppressed cities where rigid laws imprison freedom, where thinking is confined and conscience is abated, where those who question are branded as traitors where creativity and righteousness are beaten, where pluralism is chained. We weep for all cities. We see and we grieve. 
and yet we have not learned the things that make for peace. So we pray. Kyrie eleison. With Jesus weeping over the city, teach us to walk the way that leads to life. Transform our grief into determination, our tears into action, and our acts into a just peace. Amen. As we begin 2021, may God prepare our journey. May Jesus guide our footsteps. May the spirit strengthen our bodies and may the light shine love and hope upon us, illuminate our path and lead our way. <laughs>